I just wanted to ask you, what do you remember about the story about the pilgrim then? Because instead of me asking questions, why don't you tell me what do you remember? Yeah, this one here, this ugly looking thing. And then he like saw a gate and yeah. went through it. Uh, do you remember what the gate was called? Fire. Nice one, what? Do you remember what the gate was called? The gate of the tree. Nearly. I think I asked you this question last week, the other week. It's when you, 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 you're trying to make a... A decision, that's it, a decision. It was called Gate of Decision, okay? And he was going from a really bad place called the city, you remember? I, I asked you the question, city of? Flora, you remember? The city of destruction, which is a dark, black place, a horrible place with sin. And he's trying to get to a nice, beautiful place called Celestial City, yeah? So two cities, but one is a really bad place, and he's on this journey. And he learned in this book, the, what's this? Bible. The Bible, yeah? About a man who, well, actually, that's a gate of decision there. So well done, that. I'll give you a sweet one, that's what I want. About a man who went from a place far, far away in heaven, down to, where do we live? Earth. Down to earth, yes. And that man, who we, all, who we know as the, who's that man? Who's that man that came down to earth? Jesus. Jesus, God's son Jesus, came down to earth. And was he a good person? Yeah, yeah he was perfect. Did he do good things, nice things for people? Yes, he did. And so, Pilgrim, in the story, was learning all about this man, Jesus Christ. And he became a Christian. He came to that gate, and he went through it, and he learned about the cross. He fell before the cross, and the burden that he'd be carrying, and it's heavy, this. It's really heavy. It's got... Well, it's, it's got weight to it anyway. And he was carrying it for ages and for years of his life because he started to realize the things he'd, got, he'd done wrong. He realized his mistakes. And it just simply fell off. It fell off and it went away. Just like when I trusted the Lord Jesus as well. And anyway, he went on a journey, so uh, Esme, and he arrived at Palace Beautiful where there were other people just like him, other people who had trusted in the Lord Jesus. I'll show you if you want because he went here. So he arrived there, and then they gave him armor to wear, which is this armor here. They taught, told him about the shield, the, the sword, the belt, the, the breastplate, the helmet, and all of these things in the Bible, they work together to protect you from the things that the devil will throw against you, to arm you with a sword, which is the the Bible, which he learned he had to read every day, and he received another weapon as well, which was called pray and watch, so he had to be always praying and watching every day, not just sometimes, he had to pray every day that God would protect him. And he went back on his way, on his journey, and he went through the valley of humiliation, and, and then he had to fight against this monster here, called Apollyon in the story, and he, he defeated him with his last blow, but he was really, well, he was exhausted from it. And he realized, I need to be always watching, always praying, because I could make a mistake. And you know what? Was, any of us could do the same thing. And then he met a friend. Well, he met somebody who became his friend. And his name was called... Hopeful. So let's say it together, kids. Hopeful. Hopeful. And what's his name? Pilgrim. Let's say that one as well. Pilgrim. But he didn't just become pilgrim. What did he become, Mark? He became pilgrim? Pilgrim Christian, yeah. He became pilgrim Christian because the old had gone. 
completely gone. His, his burden had left him, so he's no longer just a pilgrim, he was a pilgrim Christian. And, he's, and Hopeful said, why can't can I walk with you and we'll go together to the celestial city? And then, this is a problem. Pilgrim decided, right, it's starting to get quite rocky, and they started to read their Bible a little bit less, and they started to get more worried. And they were tired, and it was, you know, they, they had their armour, but they were tired, and they were easily, some days they would read the Bible, others they wouldn't. Kind of like me sometimes, kids, sometimes I forget. And Pilgrim said, listen, that way looks really nice, look at that meadow over there, why don't we just stop from this path? That we're following and try and, a, a, try and shortcut. And then that's when it started to rain and it all started to go badly wrong and they needed some refuge and they hid, you know, under some, uh, some wood here, as you can see, to seek some rescue when the storm came. And then they heard this, this stamp, stamp, stamp outside and they woke up and they wondered what on earth that could be. And they woke up to see this giant called Giant Despair in front of them. And they really did start to get despaired about it, in despair about this, because he was scary and he was massive. And they started to really doubt themselves. Now remember, what does he have with him at all times? The Bible, which is like a sword. And he could have used it, he could have used his shield, but neither of them did. And they were so scared, and, and the giant said to them, what are you doing in my meadow? And they said, well, we're trying to get to the celestial city and we thought, well, your meadow looks so nice and we, we wanted to go through it. Will you, will you just let us go back over the fence and we'll go back and we won't worry anymore? But he said, no, other Christians have had to try, have tried to come through my meadow. And you know what I do with them? Well, he, he, he basically, he, he got them over his shoulder. I do it with Eowyn sometimes. He got them over his shoulder and he carried them and he snowed them into the dungeon and what do you think the dungeons were a nice place? No. No, I can't really recreate it here, but they were really dark places, even darker than the prison that John Bunyan was in at the beginning of the story. And it was horrible. They didn't get food either. It wasn't like we looked after in the prison. They didn't get food. It was a horrible, horrible place. And Pilgrim started to get so sad because it was his idea. He said, why don't we try the easy way? He said that. And he said, look, listen, hopefully you must be so annoyed at me. I'm sorry that I took this the wrong way. I should have been reading my Bible. I should have been listening to what God, I should have been watching. And at any point, I could have used my sword, but I didn't. And, and you know, ho um, well, hopeful, he said, right, well, why don't we read the Bible? You know, we might never get to this celestial city, but let's at least read the Bible. And they started to read the Bible, and they learned about a man called Joseph. Do you remember Joseph? They read that Joseph was a man who trusted in God as well, but did everything go well for Joseph? What happened to him? He took off him, yeah, more than took off him. What did they do with it? They, they ruined it, they ripped it. They pretended that an animal had um, come and killed Joseph. They lied to their dad. They told their dad that he's dead. They lied to him. What else happened? Do you remember anything else, Flora? About Joseph, do you remember anything? The one with the coat that went to Egypt. Do you remember anything else, Evan? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Well done, Flora. You're paying attention to the story, and that's what it's important. And you remember Benjamin because it's such a good name, isn't it? So yeah, you're right. They brought their youngest brother Benjamin, who you know their dad loved Benjamin, and it wasn't right really because he had twelve sons and he had favourites. Now I asked all you kids here that day if you would mind if your mum and dad had a favourite. Not in your case because you're the only one, but. I asked you, and you all said that I, don't, I couldn't care less. But anyway, it isn't, it isn't fair if you that. But he had favourites and he got so sad. But anyway, we were reading about this. Pilgrim and Hopeful, they were reading about it. And they learnt that God, even when he had his low points, 
even when he went the wrong way for her. God always looked after Joseph. God was with him. We, we sing that in the song. God didn't go back on his promise. And it was at that moment that Pilgrim realised, you know, he had all his armour. We learned that his armour is like a pocket knife that has all these different tools. And when we have God in our life and we have the Bible, when I have the Bible and I read it, God prepares me and God gives me everything I need for life. The Bible teaches that. And he said, hopeful, I, I forgot. God gave me a key. God gave me a key that says it's the promise of God. And I had it here all along, I didn't use it. We could have tried to get out of here. So he got this key and he, and he, uh, he went to the door and he tried to turn it and it opened. And, and he realized that the key, which was called the promise of God, is this verse, I'm gonna read it to you guys now, Flora. And the promise of God is this, well, one of many promises of God. It says here, Though I walk in the middle of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the anger of my enemies, and your right hand shall save me. So, you will revive me, you will stretch forth your hand against the anger of my enemies. Who's their enemies? What's this guy's name? Is he a small man? Is he a... Yeah, it's giant despair. Let's repeat it, despair. What's despair? Don't worry. This, Flora, despair is, is basically when, you know, you, uh, you really want your mum and dad to let you have something, but you can't have it. For whatever reason, you can't have it. And that's when you fall in despair and you can't believe it. Or when something gets taken off you that you really want and you can't have it, that's when you enter into despair. It's like, it's like being a, a Manchester City player. <laughs> Every day is despair. So these, th this, this giant, he made them feel completely in despair because they felt like they had no hope, but they did have hope. They had the key of the promise of God, which was, though I walk in the middle of trouble, you will revive me, you will stretch your hand against the anger of my enemies, who wanted to hurt them, who threw them in prison, and the Bible says, your right hand will save me. So they opened the door, it opened. They opened the next door, it opened. They opened the next door, it opened. And they rushed out of the castle, and the giant, who heard them running, of course, he ran after them. But because they were opening every door and because their despair had turned to hope, he just disappeared and he was no more. And so they set off on their journey again and they remembered kids to read their Bible, to pray and to watch. Sometimes they didn't always get it right. Some days they forget to do it, but they, they always came back to the path. And then they met another person. Who do you think this is called? This guy thinks he is the stuff. He walks around like this, and he thinks he's the answer to all of life's problems. His name is Ignorance. So we've had, we've had this guy, what's he called? No, that's hopeful. Pilgrim, who's he, Flora? Hopeful, and this guy? Ignorance. Let's say it again. Ignorance. I'll, I'll come on to him in a minute. These are a lot I'm teaching you words here, kids, as well. So anyway, he, they met this man and they said, listen, oh, have you come from the, the city of destruction as well? And he said, yes. Did you go through the gate of decision like we did and trust in the Lord Jesus and realize that you're a sinner? And he says, no, I don't need to do all of that. I'm, I know I'm a good person. I didn't need to go that way. I followed the easy way. I know I'm a good person. I know I'm not a sinner. You don't need to go through all that. You don't need to read your Bible all the time. If you're a good person, you can do whatever you want. Now, hopeful, he looked at Pilgrim and he thought, what do we do to help him? And Pilgrim said, well, there's no way. Until he realizes that he's a sinner, until he realizes that the burden will never go away, there's nothing that we can do for him. And so they said, you know, ignorance, we're trying to go the right way here. Do you want to come with us? And he says, no, nah, mate. 
I'll go my own way. And he just went on. I left to the nose, guys. He, he, he didn't care because he already thought that he had all the answers. He had done everything right. And you know, they went on their way. And you know, some days were easier than others. Some days, it wasn't all sunshine like this and all nice and green. Some days, it was rocky ground. It was tiring. And they made mistakes. But they came back to God's word, which was their sword and their shield. And they read one day, they were reading in the Bible, and they read all about a story at the, right at the beginning. I don't know if you guys remember the story about Abel and Cain. So, in the beginning there was a man and a woman called, does anyone remember? Flora? Adam and Eve. You might remember now that I said it. Adam and Eve, and they, anyway, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but this is right at the very beginning. They had two sons, one was called Abel, one was called Cain. And one day, they <coughs> realised, they trusted in God, they knew there was a God. Both of them knew there was a God. And both of them wanted to show their gratitude to God. Flora, both of them wanted to say thank you and give a present to God. Now Abel, he worked as a shepherd. And Cain, he worked on the fields. And they were both good at their jobs. Both Cain had lots of fruits and Abel had uh, animals. And he realised that there needed to be a sacrifice to God. So Abel gave the very best that he could, the, the nicest animal he possibly could, and he sacrificed it to God. But Cain, he, he thought, no, I'm going to do things my way. And he did still gave God what he could. He gave God some, fr some fruit. But he chose to ignore what he what was the right thing to do, and he just gave God not the very best that he possibly could, which was a blood sacrifice. And so, Cain was ignorant to God, and he decided to do things his way. And Flora, even after that, he continued on his way. They read about this man, and they thought, you know, this guy's a little bit like, what's his name? Ignorance. Flora, ignorance. Ignorance. Yeah, so um, they read about him and they said, right, we can never be like this man. Sometimes we think that we know what to do, but we shouldn't really go by what we feel is right. We should go by what God's word says. And so they carried on, kids. And you know, as the years went by and they were on their journey, they saw one day the celestial city and they knew they had to wait because their time hadn't come yet. I don't know when I'm going to go to heaven. I don't know what day that's going to happen, what day we will leave this earth. But I believe that God is in control and that he, when the day comes, I'm ready for it because I've trusted in the Lord Jesus and my burden has gone away. But these two men, they're waiting and you know, some days they met people from the city of destruction that did go to heaven as well. And they, they met other people who were like ignorance and he, he went on his way and he, you know, in his own way, he arrived there and he thought, right, I'm ready for going to the celestial city. But sadly, he went to the celestial city, he arrived there, and the door stayed open, and he couldn't go in. Because even though he was a good person, why do you think they didn't let him in? Why didn't they let this man in, Flora? To the celestial city. Because he, he didn't look like a good man. He didn't look like a good man. No, he might have been a really nice man. He might have been generous to people. He might have come to a place like this. He might even have read the Bible now and then. But because he believed that he was right for everything and he was the answer and that he could depend on his own strength and he didn't need to come to the cross, recognize he was a sinner. That's why when he came to God, his name wasn't in the book of life, which the Bible teaches us about. His name wasn't there. Even though he'd done all these things, he didn't realize that all that he needed to do, like Joseph in the Bible, like the Lord Jesus taught all his disciples, was to trust in the Lord Jesus and realize he was a sinner and believe that he's the only answer. And so these men eventually, kids, because they trusted in the Lord Jesus and they went the right way, they knew that the only way 
uh, the only way was through the gate of decision, coming to the cross, coming to the Lord Jesus who died on the cross and going that way. There is only one way to get to God. There is another way that leads to a really sad place called hell, but they realized that this is the only way. And they arrived one day, we don't know when because it's a story, and John Bunyan teaches us that these two men, because they trusted in the Lord Jesus, pilgrim and hopeful, they arrived to the city of the celestial city, and there was a lot of happiness and joy when they got there. And that kids is the end of the story. But I want you kids to understand that whilst this is just a story, and you know it's not something that you'll find in the Bible, John Bunyan, this man here that we learned about at the beginning, he was a Christian when he wrote this book in prison, and he realised that. He needed to get this message across and he wanted to do it in the form of a story using God's word. Because he was a Christian and many people in those days especially hated, hated Christians. Christians that were like him were thrown in prison because they didn't go the way the world wanted them to. And all that it required of them was to be like this man, pilgrim, who trusted in the Lord Jesus, who was humble enough to realise he was wrong and did the right thing. Now, thank you kids.